This is part 15 of Entity Framework Tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss conditional mapping an entity framework with code-first approach. This is continuation to part 14, where we discussed conditional mapping with database-first approach. Please watch part 14 before proceeding, because we'll be working with the same example that we worked with in part 14. Implementing conditional mapping with code-first approach is straightforward. All we need to do is override on model creating method in employee DB context class. Now the idea here is to apply a permanent filter on employee entity so that only the employees who are not terminated are always returned. And to achieve that, we are making use of requires and has value functions. So basically, we are telling here, you know, we need to return employee entities where is terminated has a value of false. So that's going to do the conditional mapping for us. Now, what is the use of this ignore method? Now, remember, a database column can only be used once in mapping. Since we are using is terminated column and conditional mapping, we cannot use the same column again in property mapping. So with this ignore method here, we are saying um, ignore the column from property binding. OK, so it's that straightforward. Now, let's flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same example that we worked with in the previous session. All I have done so far is deleted the employee model that we generated from the database. And from web.config file, I have deleted that connection string, which was also automatically generated for us. Now, the first thing that we need to do here is add a class file to this project. And then let's specify the name as employee.cs for this file. And this class is going to have these four properties employee ID, first name, last name, gender, and is terminated. And let's add another class file. And let's call this employee db context.cs. And we need to import system.data.entity namespace and make this employee db context inherit from db context class this class is going to have a public property which is going to return db set of employee objects and let's call this property employees and we need to override on model creating method which is present in db context base class and this is where we specify our conditional mapping and I'm going to copy and paste this exact same code that we have seen on the slide. All right. And if you look at webform1.aspx, the code on this uh, web form has not changed in any way. Now, I'm going to convert this employees to list. And the reason for this is if we don't do it, we get an error at runtime because when the database is first created, the table is going to be empty. And then when we bind DB set of employees directly to the grid view, when we don't have rows, we get an error at runtime. So I'm just converting it to the list so that we don't get that runtime error. And now what I'm going to do is delete the sample database, which we have generated using database first approach in the previous session. And now let's go ahead and run this project. But before that, let's make sure we have the connection string in web.config file. So I'm going to copy the connection string and paste that right there. So employee DB context uh, is the name of the connection string, which should match with the name of our DB context class. So now with all these changes, let's go ahead and run this. So now the sample database should be automatically created. Employees table should be created. So it's still loading here. All right, now let's go here and refresh this databases. Notice that the sample database is created and we have employees table as well, but it will not have any data within that. Let's execute this insert script to insert test data. So there we go. Now, before we reload this, let's also fire up SQL profiler so that we can examine the query that is generated. So let's connect to it using Windows authentication run a new trace and then let's reload this web form so now notice that we only have the employees uh, who are not terminated loaded and if you look at sql profiler there should be a where clause as well so where is terminated equals zero so implementing conditional mapping with code first approach is that straightforward that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day